This is part 34 of JavaScript tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss timing events in JavaScript. In JavaScript, a piece of code can be executed repeatedly at specified time interval. For example, you can call a specific JavaScript function every one second. This concept in JavaScript is called timing events. The global window object has got these two methods, set interval and set timeout. These two methods allow us to execute a piece of JavaScript code at specified time interval. Set interval method executes a specified function repeatedly at specified time interval. This method has got two parameters, func and delay. The func parameter specifies the name of the function that we want to execute, and the delay parameter specifies the time in milliseconds to wait before calling the specified function again. Set timeout executes a specified function after waiting a specified number of milliseconds. This method also has got two parameters, func and delay. Func parameter specifies the name of the function that we want to execute, and the delay parameter specifies the time in milliseconds to wait before calling the function again. The actual wait time may be longer. Using this delay parameter, we can only enforce the minimum wait time. Depending on the other things, the actual delay time may be longer. Let's look at an example. What we want to do is display current date and time in a div tag. So first let's include a div tag and give it an ID. Let's call this time div. Now let's write a function to get the current date time. In JavaScript, to get the current date time, we use the date constructor. We want to display the current date time within this div tag. So let's use document.getElementById and then pass the ID of the div tag to this function. And then we want to set in a HTML of the div tag. And then call getCurrentDateTime function. So when we run this, we expect the current date time to be displayed within the div tag. Here we have got the date and then here we have got the time. At the moment, time is static. We want this time to be dynamic in the sense the time should be automatically updated every one second. Let's see how to solve this. To solve this, we should be able to call this function repeatedly every one second. If we can do that, this function will compute the time at that point and then displays the current date and time within the div tag. So if we can call this every one second, the time will be automatically updated every one second. So in JavaScript, we have two methods to execute a, a function repeatedly, set interval and set timeout. So let's make use of set interval function. So set interval has got two parameters, the code or function that we want to execute repeatedly. So which function we want to execute repeatedly? Get current date time. And then the delay between each execution, what is the time delay? We want the time delay to be one second, that is 1000 milliseconds. So now let's run this and we expect now that time to be dynamic on the page. Notice that it's automatically updated every one second. There is another method called clear interval. So what is this method going to do? It's going to cancel the repeated execution of the method that we have set up using set interval. Okay, so what is the repeated action here, the repeated action is calling this get current date time every uh, one second. So if you want to cancel that repeated action, then you use clear interval method. Clear interval method has got a parameter, interval ID. So what is this interval ID parameter? It's the identifier of the repeated action that we want to cancel. So where do we get that interval ID from? The set interval method is going to return the interval ID. Let's look at an example and that should make all this clear. So now what we want to do is include two buttons on this page, start clock and stop clock. When we click stop clock, it should make the time on the page static. And when we click start clock, it should make the time dynamic, basically starting and stopping this clock right here. Okay, so let's see how to achieve that. So let's include an HTML break and then two buttons here. 
input type equals button and then the value on that is going to be start clock let's have another button here and on this button let's include stop clock text so now I'm going to create a function here I'm going to call this start clock and this is the function which is going to call set interval and this function is going to make sure that this get current date time method is called every one second and this method is going to display the current date and time within the div tag now I'm going to create a global variable here I'm going to call it interval ID and I'm going to initialize this variable using the return value of set interval method. So what is the set interval method going to return? It's going to return the identifier of the repeated action. So what's the repeated action here? Calling this get current date time method every one second. Okay, so it's going to return the identifier of that repeated action. In a bit we'll understand the purpose of that ID. Now I'm going to write another function. I'm going to call this stop clock and all this function will do is call clear interval function now what is this function going to do it's going to stop um, you know the repeated execution it's going to cancel the repeated execution in order for that method to be able to do it it requires the identifier of the repeated action and where do we have the identifier now it's present in this variable interval ID so I'm going to pass that interval ID to this clear interval function that's it so this is going to cancel that repeated execution so when we click start clock button we want to call this start clock method similarly when we click stop clock button we want to call this stop clock method alright so let's run this now so now when the page loads initially we don't have the date and time displayed but when we click start clock notice that it displays the date and time and the time is dynamic the moment we click stop clock it stops it we click start clock again it starts it. Now for some reason if you want the current date and time to be displayed when the page initially loads you simply have to call get current date time function manually once that's going to ensure that the current date and time is displayed on the page but that is going to be static once you click start clock it's going to make it dynamic if you click stop clock it's going to stop it so a very simple example that demonstrates the use of set interval and clear interval methods. Now in addition to these two methods, we also have two other methods. Those are these methods here, set timeout and clear timeout. So these two methods are also very similar to set interval and clear interval. The syntax is very much similar and the functionality is very much similar. Let's understand the usage of those two methods with an example. So what we have want to do now is design a countdown timer. So within the text box control we are going to have um, you know any value. For example here we have 10 and then when I click start timer it should start counting that number down. 10, 9, 8 and then countdown should happen every one second and when I click stop timer it should stop counting down and if I click start timer again it should resume the countdown from where it has left and then the moment the value reaches 0 we want to display done within the text box control so let's see how to achieve this now we want to achieve this using set timeout and clear timeout functions instead of um, set interval and clear interval so we would require interval ID global variable so let's leave it there and instead of the div tag here we need a text box control so let's go ahead and include a text box control so input type equals uh, text and the value on that is going to be 10 and let's give it an ID let's call it txt box and now let's create a function let's call this 
start timer and to this function I'm going to pass a parameter I'm going to call this control ID now remember the initial time is present in this text box so I'm going to pass the ID of this uh, text box to this function okay and here I'm going to create a variable I'm going to call this control and I'm going to use document.get element by ID we pass the control ID to this function so what is this function I mean what is this going to return it's going to return that text box control okay and this variable is holding that so now we're going to create a variable let's call it seconds and where are we going to get the seconds from from this text box so we will pass the ID of that text box to this function when we call it so at the moment you know this variable is holding a reference to that text box control so we can simply say control dot value which is going to return us the value that is present within this text box okay and we want a countdown timer so seconds equals seconds minus one now if the value within the seconds variable is zero then what do we want to display within the text box we want to display the message done so control dot value equals done and once that is done we want to simply return from the function okay on the other hand if seconds is not zero then what do we want to do we want to display the value that is present within the seconds variable in the text box okay so pretty straightforward logic there read the value from the text box okay subtract the value oh, subtract the value and if seconds is zero display done within the text box control and then return from the function otherwise display the updated value within the text box okay so now we want to call this function repeatedly and we are going to make use of uh, set timeout function for that so set timeout again this function expects two parameters the function that we want to call repeatedly and the time delay between each call okay so which function do we want to call we want to call start timer function so I'm going to use a slightly different syntax here so I'm going to specify an anonymous function here and this anonymous function is going to call this start timer function and this start timer function expects control ID to be passed and we want to pass the ID of this text box so that's the first parameter and the second parameter is going to be the time delay and we want the time delay to be thousand milliseconds remember with set timeout function you can only specify the minimum time delay but depending on the other things you know the actual delay may be even longer and just like set interval function set timeout function is also going to return the identifier of the repeated action and we want to store that within this interval ID variable so interval ID equals whatever ID we get back from that function so now let's create another function here and this function is going to be stop timer and within this function we are going to call clear timeout function just like clear interval function this clear timeout function is going to um, you know cancel the repeated execution okay so to this function we need to pass the timeout ID and that's present at the moment in this variable so let's pass that to this variable and that's it so we have the start timer and stop timer functions when we click the button that is this button start timer let's actually change the text here to stop timer so when we click start timer we want to call the start timer function 
and this function expects control ID to be passed as an argument so we want to pass this text box ID and when we click stop timer we want to call stop timer function alright so let's run this now so initially within the text box we have got value 10 the moment we click start timer notice that it's counting uh, the value down every one second when I click stop timer it stops when I click start timer again it should resume and the moment it reaches 0 it should say done and it should return from the function call thank you for listening and have a great day